I know the title of the video said the North Pole to the South Pole, but this is the North Pole Bar in Dumfries in Donegal. I came up here last night. It's a hell of a long drive to here, but I'm going to put this through punishment today to drive it to the South Pole. That's in Kerry. While this all may sound very, very straightforward, actually driving from Dumfries down to the South Pole Inn is over 500 kilometres which is well beyond the WLPT range of the Skoda Enyaq. We have to go from here to Sligo, uh, Galway, Limerick, uh, Kerry, all down along the west coast of Ireland. It's over 500 kilometres and it's well beyond the range of this car because I could not get a charge last night. Got a charge in Letterkenny up to about 95%, but I still have to drive here this morning from Letterkenny or from Buncrana to here, which is Dumfries, and I have to go back down the west. So I'm actually about 85% or 90% charge. So I'm not actually starting with a full time, but that's just life, right? We're just gonna have to deal with that throughout the day. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and uh, let's go. I'm off from the quietest start line in history for what was going to be the longest drive. I departed the North Pole Bar heading, well, you know, south. Beautiful countryside of Donegal would set me heading from Dumfries down to the outskirts of Letterkenny where I had to charge up the night before. I was sorry to see the back of the little hotel I stayed in. The Harbour Inn has lovely staff, great food, but only one day to get to the South Pole. Harbour Inn, lovely little spot. The friendliest staff I think I've ever met in any hotel anywhere. Uh, amazing, but anyway. My sat-nav is set, I'm using the car sat-nav for this, not like Google Maps or anything, because the car knows its own charge. And so I've decided to use that because that's gonna tell me that I have to stop for a charge. Part of the way through. I don't know what the charge point is that you're picking. I think you can probably click that, can you? You can, yeah, 50 kilowatt ESB chargers in Galway somewhere. I don't know, it's, it's in Galway, and so my next stop is Galway, so off we go. With a population of just over five and a half thousand people in Buncrana, it was formerly home to the O'Doherty clan at the mouth of the River Crana. The town moved to its current location in 1718 when George Vaughan built the main street. Still some 250 kilometers to my next stop to fill up the tank. Speaking of the car, let's find out about that. A couple of minutes of information about the car. First of all, I have active cruise control, which reads signs and things on a road and increases and decreases its speed accordingly, which is kind of cool, actually. I'm trying to figure out what's the most efficient way, whether it's my right foot or the car is going to pick the, the best, most efficient way there. It's just detected 100 km an hour zone, so we're off at 100 km an hour. Um, sat nav is big, bright and clear. I have 83% charge, according to my my machine here which is into vehicle and then we 82 percent left right now so that's where i am right now um which is enough at the moment to do 357 kilometers i actually think i'll go a bit further now because i drove this here from dublin yesterday uh, right across the middle of the country very hard to get charge points in the middle of the country by the way just saying Oh, it was quite difficult, but I, I didn't really need it because I started with a 100% charge in the first place. See, the car slowed itself down there for the corners. Very, very clever car. Just, like, clever. Anyway, we're going to put in some good mileage today. I'm going to go back into my menu and back into navigation there so we can see what's going on. I don't have any turn for 7.4 kilometers. That view, though, that's worth looking at. Like, look at that. I'm going to have to zoom through places today. I reckon it's a seven hour odd drive here, seven, seven and a half hour drive that I'm taking on. Uh, and the car is now, of course, coming up to a 60 km hour zone, so it's already slowing down. If we look at that, I'm doing, I'm just a passenger here, really. I'm just a passenger. So I'm heading for Letterkenny is the next place. Very famous place where a fella did some different. <laughs> But that's not what I found for. It's actually Donegal Rally, kind of home base places where Letterkenny is most famous. But I'm only passing through. I was there yesterday because they have two fast chargers in the town. Only one of them was working, but we got a charge in the end. Uh, so it did take, it was a little bit of a hassle yesterday trying to get charges. 
you know, six o'clock in the evening and you're trying to get charged up and it's all a bit of a pain and it's just hard going. But you're all right, we're going, we're going, we're on the way. Just at the end of that clip, my phone rang, which turned out to be this. Amazon Prime services will be auto-renewed, and 79 euros and 99 cents will be auto-debit from your bank account to enjoy your Amazon Prime services. If you wish to cancel the services, then speak to our cancellation department by pressing 1. Thank you. <laughs> I can't believe I caught a scam on camera. I can't believe it. I do not. Just did a little drone flight there, but I've stopped off here at a, at a monument thing. It's just a beautiful area, beautiful. Look at the mountains here behind me. It's like somewhere in Austria. It's an amazing country, you know. You gotta get out and see more of Ireland. Lads, I think Donegal drivers might be the best drivers in the world. Honest to God. No fuss, no muss, no nothing. We just get on with the drive. Lads are flying along, uh, heading to work or going wherever it is they're going. We just seem to be covering ground very quickly through, through Donegal. I'm coming into the north end of Letterkenny now, which is what I'm trying to get to. Uh, I have to hang a rice ahead at the, at the traffic lights or at the roundabout. But other than that, we're, we're making good progress. I'm going to be there by 1543 is what it says on the screen. It's about seven hours, so the car is taken into account I'm going to stop for a charge at some point. Now the other part actually gets me as well as that to come back. I'm not staying in Kerry, I'm coming back across uh, Ireland to get home tonight. So I'm going to have to charge again. It's like I'm putting a thousand kilometers more or less onto this car over a 24 hour period. The ring road around Letterkenny sent me immediately south down towards Ballyshannon and then Bundoran, but of course Ben Bulbin is in the area too, so we had to stop there. The mountain was formed during the Ice Age, approximately 320 million years ago, and is composed primarily of limestone. There are fossilized seashells throughout the mountain range, and there are plants to be found on Ben Bulbin that cannot be found anywhere else in Ireland. But now I had to get on the road again to Chum. There's more way ahead, and that's the enemy of long range driving because you don't slow down. I just passed through Sligo there. It's grown up, isn't it? It's a really big town now. Two bits of good news. I've turned directly south heading for Galway now. So I have um, 22 kilometers on this road, which is the N17. I wish I was that N17. Stone walls and the grasses. Green haven't seen the stone walls yet. They're coming though. They're on this road. The N17 boys, made famous by the saw doctors. Uh, but it's a, uh, it's one of those, it's actually a sad song, but it sounds like a happy song, but it's a great, it's a sad song actually. Uh, now I'm stuck beside, behind a 95 Sun Chaser 11. Wow, Sun Chaser, just what you want. A camper van doing 65 kilometers an hour. Do you know this is not a race? I have to remind myself it's not a race. I'm in no hurry to get there, but I would like to get there before it gets dark. Sun Chaser. <laughs> Pull over, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you won't get it. Hey, whoa, I'm out. Thanks, Sun Chaser. On the ball, buddy. Gonna give him a little salute. Salute day. With a flash of the hazard warning lights. 
It's good manners in Ireland, by the way. When you overtake something, and someone does something, or they get out of your way, or they pull over to let you by, or whatever it is, you give them a little salute with your hazard warning lights just as you go by, and they'll flash you. They will flash you to say, no problem, no problem, my friend. Enjoy your journey. Right, sit rep. I have 197 kilometers of range left, and I have 338 kilometers to go. So I'm definitely going to need a charge. You see, it's not the range. If I had set off this morning in a petrol car with 80% of its fuel tank, I probably would have had to fill up at around the same distance anyway, more or less. It's only diesel does that huge mile jump thing where it goes from, you know, a 1,200 kilometer range and you just don't fill it up for a month. It's only diesel does that. Petrol doesn't really do that. Hybrids don't really do that either. Uh, but it's not really the range so much anymore. It's the charging bit, the slow part. Like, I'm going to have to give over 45 minutes or so to charge this up. So I've been on the road for what seems like hours and hours and hours, but I'm stopping in Tune uh, for a charge. There's a fast charge point there, and I'm looking forward to actually getting a break at that fast charge point. Uh, it's pretty close by, I think only about eight or nine minutes from it now. Fingers crossed it's, it works and there's nobody at it. My, my, the app attached to the car says it's, it's clear. And the app on the ESB phone app thing, that says it's clear. So I'm, I'm heading for it now. Uh, I'm going to have to stop there for at least 51 minutes, according to, to the machine here, to get me enough charge to get me all the way down to Kerry. So I'm going to stay, I think, until it's full. I think it's probably a sensible thing to do because... Um, I, I'm not my final destination is not actually Kerry my final destination is Port Leash so I gotta cross the country again after stopping in Kerry what a beautiful town Chum. Jesus that's gorgeous all the bunting is out the Galway colours are out beautiful 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 there's a dozen cars coming to the other side of the road zoom across Okay, so it should be up here on the right-hand side of the road somewhere, I think. I fucking hope so. This is going to be a very short-lived charge if I can't find a charge point. Could you admit, oh, I'm parking. This could be good. This could be it. We could be here. It's in there, is it? In there. Right. Go on, let's cross road there. Good lad. Thanks. It's in here somewhere, is it? Oh, I see it! Yes! Don't tell me there's anyone at it! Yes! There's no one at it! We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Pull in there before someone else pulls up. Go away now, it's my charge point now, boy. That's that. I'll fight you for it. The charge door is on that side or this side? It is on this side. The eagle has landed. We're here. We made it. Okay, now it's time to charge the car and have a little rest. We're gonna be stuck here for about at least an hour, I'd say. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, wish me luck. We are charging in tune. I'll tell her it's all right, no problem. But I noticed something. Look at the cable. Looks like someone had a go at ripping this one out and they screwed it back in up there. It wasn't just luck I needed, it was a little bit of patience too. But I didn't waste any time in Tomb. Now, this could be my best idea or possibly my worst idea, I'm not sure. But we're going to ask the people of Tomb what they reckon about cars and transport and, well, electric cars, since mine's here charging away. And we found out what exactly it is that's bothering them most. And you think Ireland is ready for this electric thing? No. No, we're near. What's the worst? What, what's the world I'd be missing? Charging points. Everywhere. You need, if you want all electric, you need lots of charging points. And more incentive, more grants and stuff. I just don't, like, I personally don't think I'd ever be able to change to an electric car. I like my diesel car, like, you know, the way it is. But I suppose it is a good idea, but I don't think I'd go for it. 
And what, what what would hold you back? Is it the price of the car, or is it charging infrastructure? Sure, Simon said a charge point. Now, what what's holding you back from it? Probably the price of the car is one of them as well. But like even charging it too, like I know someone had said to me before that you put diesel or petrol in maybe a certain amount, and you charge the rest. I feel like so if you're late one morning, like or something, you forget to charge it overnight. Like you're you're screwed in the morning, really. Like so, yeah. it wouldn't be for me anyways. Even away, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Bryce. How's it feel? Great, feels oh, yeah. great. Up Galway, up Galway, up Limerick. But like the cost of electric vehicles is very steep when you consider alternatives like uh, petrol or diesel. So then obviously you have charging points, uh, you know, the lifespan, battery replacements, and how, how many years they can last. So I don't think I'd make the jump now yet. Uh, it's too expensive and it's a bit too impractical. But once the charging infrastructure kind of gets up to speed and simply the cost of them comes down, then absolutely, there's, you know, all thing, all other things being equal, I don't really see a reason why I wouldn't get an electric car, basically. It's fine in cities where you have quite a few places where you can charge up. But if you're on the road every day, uh, we'll say if you come home in the evening and forget to charge up, you're stuck the next day, aren't you? Yeah, it's true, you know, it's true, yeah. You know, yeah. you have to be thinking ahead all the time. You have to plan your journey, I think. Very, very nice. And what, would you have a major concern of electric cars? Is it the cost or is it the charging points oh, or everything. what? Uh, cost, charging point, everything. And I would honestly feel as a driver, I don't know enough about them. And even if I did look into them, um, the points, as you say, for me, I don't know uh, where they'd be. Locally, where I live, I, am, I only know one or two. If I had to travel to work, I work in Galway, I don't know where to be. So for me, that would be a problem. Um, the last thing you'd want is to be going to a job and have to stop in the middle of the road and not know where you're going to charge your vehicle. <laughs> I think that would be a problem, do you know? And you live in a town or the country? The country, yeah. So I'm driving everywhere. Like, they wouldn't, like, even if I was to get rid of the car and get a bus, I wouldn't have the option. I still have to like, drive or get dropped to a bus. So it's not ideal. Maybe for people in towns and cities, like, It'd be more convenient for them like, to get buses and stuff like for everything, but not for the countryside anyways, I don't think. We were in Amsterdam uh, in January and it was Teslas everywhere. And like, it was quiet. So with your cyclists and Teslas, yeah, you can see the difference if it was just all electric. Yeah. There would be less noise. Well, it depends on the driving now. I don't do as much driving now as I used to. But, yeah. but um, if I were to go to Dublin, we'd say from Tune, that's, uh, you'd need to stop before you get to Dublin to charge up. Yeah. So um, it takes a lot, your journey will be a lot longer. Yeah. You know? And how do you think about the price of them being like they're between 40,000 and, well, the sky's the limit, 40 yeah, to 50, 40, 60,000? Starting at 40,000 for a new car, how many people can afford 40,000? Okay, now you get a grant, we'll say 10 grand or whatever, but still 30 grand more is a lot of money to be paid back. It is, yeah. yeah it is. And especially uh, if you have a mortgage and if you have. Uh, uh, you know, a family and whatever, you, you know, everything else is going up. I can tell you the noise level here in Chum is so high. This one road that goes right through the centre of town and it's just chock-a-block with cars. And this is summertime. All the locals tell me here that I was talking, and some wouldn't talk on camera, that in when schools go back to this road is just impassable in the morning. So it's an impossible place for us to be. Electric cars are more or less, well, as ready as they're going to be, but it looks like the infrastructure is ready. And that seems to be the hang up for people, the price of the car and the infrastructure for charging them. And it's the biggest hang up people have right now. It's going to be the biggest hang up into the future. Anyway, we got to get back on the road because I got to carry before it gets dark. Okay, good people of Chum. Muchos gracias for the chats and stuff. Uh, and I'm out of here. Uh, I got my charge. I now have enough to get to my destination, I think. I hope. And we're going to get going. So, 249 kilometers to go. Let's go! Thank you very much to the lovely people of Chum for answering my questions. But with just under 250 kilometers to go, I had to get out of town. The next bit is a long section of motorway, which is kind of the enemy of long range driving because the slower you go, the further you go and the motorway never really slows down. But you know what? We got to go through a toll bridge, a tunnel, before we get to Limerick and onwards then to Kerry. I 
of cruise control makes boring driving really. It's featureless sort of motorway as well. They're very efficient, motorway is very efficient, but they're, they're bloody boring things. You know, they just they take the good out of driving really. But I'm looking forward to Kerry Roads down to Inch Beach and all that. Beautiful. But I passed a sign back there that says um, no biogas in Gort or something. It strikes me that change is very difficult for people. It also strikes me that whatever is good to do, like in Port Leash, they want to put in, in the bog, they want to put in this kind of, it's a super dump, it, it's, it's not a dump. It's an incredibly high temperature incinerator that is air quality monitored by the EPA and everybody else so tightly that it cannot emit anything. But people don't want it because they want to throw their rubbish in a bin and have that put into the ground to live there for a bazillion years. They want to buy simply better things from Aldi which come in that black plastic that's not recyclable. But they don't want a super dump or a high pressure incinerator or biogas or methane gas to convert into fuel. They don't want any of that. Not in their backyard, not in my backyard. That's, that's the phrase, I think. We know we have to change. We just don't want to change. Fortunately, I ain't going to Galway, it's over there. I'm actually going this road, round the edge of Galway. This is the most boring motorway in the world. I spy with my little eye something beginning with G. Grass. I spy with my little eye something beginning with T. It's tarmac. I spy my little eye something beginning with C. Slouts. There are 87 kilometers of this. Getting through it. While this is an absolutely awesome stretch of water, but it goes right down into Limerick, it was draining my battery, so I was anxious to get the whole thing over with. But I never exceeded 105 kilometers an hour all along the motorway. Anyway, I think we have to go onto the M20, I think, which means we'll have to either go through the tunnel or we'll have to go through Tollbridge somewhere. I don't know. I'm not sure this thing is in charge, really. I have 139 kilometers left to go, 298 kilometers of range. I hate paint tolls. You gotta get in the right lane and you have a start. You can't use cards anywhere. I don't see a card up anywhere. There's a human being here. Don't tell me you can't use cards. You can use cards. You can, yeah. It says contactless there. Let's go into this lane. Let's, let's get a card out. It's always a race from a toll bridge. Always a race from a toll bridge. No driver in their right mind can leave a toll bridge like a normal human being. You can't. You must. You must leave a toll bridge like it's Formula One lights. Big bridge, all the same. Tunnel, bridge, you know. Listol is out the other way there. No, Limerick is that way. And we're going off there towards Dora Doyle is what we're heading for, actually, kind of. Um, then we're hanging an absolute right-hand hooky turn thing to get us uh, over towards Kerry.
because we have to hook around. Um, so a sit rep. I have 294 kilometers of range. I have 133 kilometers left to go. It's been a bloody adventure, this one. It really has. Hold, hold. So I'd left the open motorway behind me, which was great for fuel economy, but the problem was now I'm into tourist land, which Adair is a notorious bottle point that gets you out as far as Kerry. Adair is a gorgeous place beautiful town to look at Adair Manor and all, all them places it's just beautiful fantastic but the traffic is ferocious I'd quite like to toilet now I have 120k to go still but I'd quite like a toilet now something that's been lacking since I got on the motorway uh, which was Ennis I think we got on the motorway and since I got on and got off, I never actually passed the petrol station to, to stop to go to the toilet. It's so pretty and twee. They're taking little pictures of it and everything. It's so pretty here. Move the bloody cars, though, will you? Look at all the cars. Up on the footpath on the double yellow lines. That's where they are, across the road. This is Ireland. Somehow that doesn't compute. It's fine. You can just park right there on the WL line. And they can too, because there's a space between the WL line and the footpath. They're going to fit the car in it. They have it. It's this is the money pit of Limerick. This is this is where this is designed to extract money. It's a bit like their village and places like that. They, it's designed to pull the money from you. Even just passing through, I can feel my bank balance drain. It's just draining. And the slower I go, the quicker it's draining. So I finally got out of Adair and back onto the larger roads, but going was still quite slow because there's so much tourist traffic in the area. But at least we're starting to get onto the final run, even if it was raining. I'm actually getting emotional here, lads. I'm driving along some of the most beautiful roads in the world and it's covered in cloud and it's raining. And that's broke. I think it's out of, it's out of battery maybe or something. Um, it's been a long day. It's been a long day. The stamina of the batteries are starting to tell. <laughs> the battery in the car as well. I have 160 kilometers left. I have 12 kilometers to the end of the run. So you can't tell me that electric cars can't do this. They can, they can. You do have to plan though. To some degree, you must use the sat nav from the car to tell you where to stop and how to get there. Because there isn't enough charge points. There just isn't. When you get there, there's one. Like there's one public proper char charge point in tune. And then there's two more in petrol stations, but they're not public property. They might say ESB on the front, but they're rented, so to speak. You know what I mean? And you're at the behest of going to a petrol station then, which means you're at the behest of the petrol station. You have to sit there. You have to go in and buy the coffee and the tea. You know, you, know, it's, well, you don't have to, but you, you still have to buy your stuff there, do your thing there. Whereas the public ones, the ones that are in the little car parks, they're gorgeous. You just plow in there. Well, I'm in the right town. The batteries have run out on absolutely everything in my devices. And I mean everything. Um, but I'm in the right town. So I'm good. We're moving. We're still going. We just got to find this bar. To the right. 500 meters, she says. 500 meters, she says. Still looking. Hannafin's, Dan Foley's pub. Jesus, this road is like, the South Pole Inn, it's right there. Your destination is on the right. I made it. I don't believe it, I made it, but I made it. Now there's nowhere to park, I bet you. I would have to be left to 
barge in somewhere we're about to barge in we're here we're here tom crean's south pole inn would you believe it would you believe it i tell you lads that was some day of driving that was that's the longest day of driving i think i've ever done i swear <laughs> every camera's run out of battery that's dead that one's dead that one's still going you saw any I mean, front facing camera, it's just, oh, I'm tired. So I finally made it. I am all the way here to the South Pole from the North Pole in Donegal this morning. Uh, it's here behind me, Tom Crean's pub um, from the North Pole in the top half of the country. It's a long drive and now I have to take my uh, electric car and go find a charge so I can make my way home again. Um, doing some drive. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you hit the subscribe button. Look out for yourselves. And until the next time, I'll see you on the far side. I could not come all the way here without coming out to Inch Beach. You can drive on the beach here when it's okay. But I ain't stopping. I'm going to hit the road and get home. <laughs> There's people on the beach with umbrellas. The Ryanair flight coming into Kerry Airport. Go on, Kerry Airport, bye. How are you getting done? Woo! <laughs> I can't really 70 kilometers mess this up because I have 33 kilometers to go to get to a charge point but only 70 kilometers of range so the margin for error is zero. I know you all want to hear a Friday night disaster story right why I'm walking out of Tesco's in Newcastle West well let me inform you my car which brought me to the charge point which is active seemingly active we got to the fast charge point in uh, Newcastle West Guess what? It ain't working. But the app shows that it's working, but it's not working. And so I stand there like an absolute dope trying to start you, okay? Call ESB. He goes, oh yeah, we had three bad calls about that today. It's not working. And I went, no shit, it's not working. I can see that <laughs> right here in front of me. So I've come to this Tesco here of 22 kilowatt to hook up to that to give me an extra couple of percent of charge so I can make it go for one in Limerick, which I hope, fingers crossed, is working or I'm not going to get home tonight. The disaster of our fucking infrastructure. Disaster continues. I got 47 kilometers to cover with 74 kilometers range. I'm gonna have to use all of my eco modes and everything else to make this happen here. It's a disaster. Fucking disaster now, I have to say. First time I've seen that come up, <clears throat> it says 10% left in the battery, 46 kilometers. 23 to go so I have a 20 I have a 20 kilometer margin of error here but that's probably not true either because that 46 could just disappear this is terrifying I, I took this car out today to prove the cars can do it the car can do it the infrastructure's a disaster zone it is a disaster zone nothing short mismanagement not spending money on it I don't know where to put the money, but it's not into the infrastructure or those chargers. That guy knew that charger was out of order. He knew it was, but it was still showing as if it's in order and working on the app. And so you make for it. That's a last ditch effort to get some energy to get home tonight, Friday night, eight o'clock in the evening. And now I'm limping along here through a dare, trying to get to the other side of it so I can get to a bloody charger in Limerick. And now it's saying 9% battery left. Jesus, this is going to be close. 22 kilometers to go? I don't know, I don't know. Down to 8% battery. 15 kilometers to go. This is the most amount of concentrated ever, ever. Oh, 7% battery left. And we was just to go, oh. And then I make call Paddy Common and EA to come and get me because there's no hope I'm gonna get anywhere here. Come on, Enyak! We can do this. We're six percent battery. Man, if I make this, I'm going to have a drink. <laughs> oh my God! If this tra charger isn't working, I'm going to set fire to it. That's what's going to happen next. I am literally going to burn it where it stands. This car is phenomenal, and I really mean this car has done everything I've asked of it. But the infrastructure is completely knackered. I'm going to do a goddamn rain dance if I make this. 
Circle K. Is this Circle K up here? Is it? Oh my god, if it's this Circle K, I have one. I have one in life. 5% battery, bitches! 5% battery! <laughs> <laughs> oh my dear god! What's that? Five percent charge left. Five percent. Oh man, my balls are sweating. Please tell me this is working. Oh, no, if this isn't working, I'm gonna crank up. I feel a relief of charging. But they charge you 46 cent, a little bit more than that, per kilowatt at a 150 kilowatt charge. With this charger that I'm charging at, they're charging me that money, but I'm only getting 50 kilowatts. Look. Five kilometers per minute. That there would be 50 kilowatts. So there, I'm paying the higher rate for the same rate as the charge next charger next to me, where the lower rate, where the Tesla man was when I got here. That's the infrastructure is a disaster. The cars are brilliant. Particularly the Skoda. Absolutely phenomenal. But the infrastructure is useless.